right guys, Supreme Family Garden here, and today we're going to talk about muscadine plants, okay? And these are some muscadines that we actually ordered from um, Ison's Nursery. And guys, um, if you ever want to order some muscadines, Ison's Nursery, very, very helpful outfit, okay? Um, and I think these are, um, I think I ordered Carlos Supreme... Um, and uh, Ison's, okay? And the reason I ordered these, these were actually a Christmas gift for one of my neighbors. But then when they came over, they saw uh, mine in the back that were a lot thicker. I'm gonna show you guys here in a second. So now I'm kinda not stuck with them, but I got me some muscadines. So I'm gonna place these right here, and I'm gonna bring you guys along and show you what we've been doing, all right? Now right here, this is what we've done okay now muscadines guys normally like 10 to 20 feet apart so what i have to do uh whenever i get another day off is i'm going to go on the, the opposite side of the fence because i think we have like 10 15 more feet of our own property on the opposite side so i'm going to clear that out to make sure they're going to get adequate light on both sides of this fence okay all right now i'm going to bring you down here and I'm going to show you a few. We just actually planted these this week. All right. And most of these, these are all supreme muscadines. We pruned them a little bit early this year. There's like one or two more that we planted down that way. We didn't want to go too far out in front of the yard. And um, I'm going to show you how we actually prune these in just a second follow me guys all right guys i'm going to show you here this is one of the mounds we made uh this is actually a southern home grape now i know some of you guys are wondering wow that's a huge mound but what it is guys when i dug these plants up the root systems on these guys are so invasive that some of them were like four or five foot long so what i did i tried to save as much as that root system that i could that's why this hole is so actually so big okay normally they recommend you know double the size of the container that it's in but with muscadines guys you want to go about say three four feet all right because those you you want the roots to have a nice a nice home you want them to be able to go deep and flourish to give you the grapes and everything that you need and if you can see here now this is one cordon that's running down this way i haven't again had a chance to kind of tie them up on the fence so i just have them right now just up here so when the spring come as the tendrils come out it'll actually just wrap itself up but i'm not going to wait that long because it's going to look ugly so i'm just going to get me a nice little piece of um i don't know twine or something that's not going to harm the plant until the tendrils actually come out of the plant and then i'll remove those because i don't want to damage the plant no way shape or form okay so again we're going to come around here and what I did was, if you guys look here, I see this one here, this plant here and that one, these are about 10, 12 foot apart, okay? But I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually leave this one. I'm gonna wait until this year and see how strong because the cane on this one is a lot bigger than that. So I'm gonna see what happens. If so, if it does well, I may leave it. If not, then I'm gonna just transplant it uh, on another part of the property. Now right here, what we're trying to do is uh, my wife and I come up with an idea to try to make this look a little bit more islandy type for the spring. We're doing a lot of renovations here on the property. So that's why I haven't made a video because I should have been filming it, but when I come home, it's like I just kind of do it and kind of be done with it. So again, we figured we'd make a video and show you guys about these muscadines, all right? Now, if you guys look right back here, honey, can you follow me please? I haven't gotten in this area yet because we're still debating if we want to keep these pineapple plants or give them away or what we're going to do with them because now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven muscadines just growing in this one area. So all of them but one have to come out, okay? So we prune most of it back, not a heavy, heavy pruning, but just enough so I could actually see what I'm doing when I'm inside of that. And if you can see here, what we're doing is we're having a border 
placed all the way around. We're gonna have these stumps removed and um, you know, just have like a nice little muscadine section. All right, one thing guys, I've, I actually learned from growing these muscadines, I was putting heavy, heavy, heavy mulch and leaves back in this area. So when I rake the yard, I'd always put so many leaves. There's a lot of pros and cons on doing that is because what happens, a lot of these, um, I'm gonna bring you guys along, I'm gonna bring you guys and show you what I'm talking about if I can find one of these spots here. Okay, here's an example of one. Okay, you see? Now this is my pineapple plant, all right? And right here, this is a sucker. Now this thing has actually grown off and rooted somewhere, but I'm gonna pull this baby up and let you guys see what's going on here. All right, now you see here, now this one I didn't catch any of the roots on it, but with what, we, what you'd wanna do is just snip that hammer knock off right there. Now some people can propagate it. Well, here's some roots right here. Let's see if I actually wanted to actually grow this, I could place it into a pot and grow it. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay it up here to later. Cause see if I throw that away in my mind, that's like me throwing away five dollars. So I'm gonna leave it there because I just ordered some pots off Amazon for 30 cent for some three gallon pots, putting them to use this year. I'll show you guys in a second. All right, now over here, this is um, some raspberry plants. We're gonna dig these up and we're just gonna really, really focus hard on our um, muscadine grapes in this year because my wife told me I can start making my own wine. So when I turn 50, I can drink it. So I figure, well, at least she told me I can. Now see here, guys, we have drip irrigation. In my mind, guys, growing muscadines, this is something that, um, that, <sighs> I'm not gonna say you need it, but if you don't have irrigation, it's gonna be a little bit tougher unless it rains very, very heavy in your area. Okay, see like right here, everything along this area, I tied it into my sprinkler system. And um, so I have a on and off valve where I actually turn it on. I'll show you guys that here in a second as well. Okay, now see right here, this is one of our other muscadines. Now there was muscadines lined up in here because they all start to root together. All right, here's one and it goes down in here. And again, normally I would prune this back to one or two, but because it's still early and it was such a mess, I left it to four. Now when spring comes, I'm gonna take off, I'll bring it down to actually two, okay? Now if you look here, each one of them are gonna be a hand width apart. That's the way you want it. Now see under here, I left some on the top and bottom. Reason being is right now, if we get another frost and I lose one or two of these, I have a backup plan. So that's something guys, you always wanna take in consideration. Don't cut them all off at one time, wait until the spring, and then you can go in and do your final um, little bit of pruning. All right, now we're gonna bring you guys on down here. Honey, watch your step, please. And again, the, the varieties that I'm actually growing here, they're um, Southern Home, I uh, have a few Carlos, and a few Supreme, and the other one is a um, Noble, okay? So um, I'm gonna show you guys a little something here. Follow me, honey. Now, when it comes to fertilizing these uh, muscadine plants, I've heard people using a 10-10-10, 13-13-13, uh, a lot of calcium nitrate and things like that. What I normally do is I use the uh, Osma Coke, but this year I'm going to fertilize slow and I'm going to see exactly because I don't want to get so much foliage because last year, guys, I had vines up there, over there, because growing it on a fence, it's hard to go behind the fence and prune. This is something when you actually grow these guys on a fence, you have to stay on top of it because they easily can go get out of control because they're not being grown on a trellis or anything like that. So you can easily prune it on this fence. They can go this way and they'll root on the other side of the fence. And um, then it's kind of like a pain in the butt to actually get to it. Like over here, I left this one to actually show you guys what type of cluster mess this can create. 
Now look at here. Now these are muscadines, right? And these vines are like all over the place. And this is what you don't want. And they grow so quick and so fast that you can easily lose yourself and lose your muscadines, all right? Like, look at here. Now, th this is like one plant that's turned into like five. The beauty of this mess is I can propagate them and sell them, okay? So, um, I'm gonna show you here. Let me see if I can get a tag on this one. Yeah, guys, it's like so many of them under here. I'm gonna start pruning a little bit here to see what I got. And what you would want to do is find the thickest cane, the healthiest, snip off everything else, like I'm going to do here. I'm going to pull this baby back. And then over here, let's see where she's going. And remember, guys, don't be that lazy. If you can save some of these, buy yourself some 50-cent pots, stick them online, and sell them. I mean, at least that's what I, I do. See, like right here, we're gonna cut that baby off. And this is just a sucker, let's cut him off. And over here, see this one's, this one's already rooted out. This is the plant. This was another um, part that came over and it actually rooted. And what happened here is probably when I actually threw the mulch or compost, it actually laid this arm down and then it rooted itself. But see, like right here, there's roots on this, guys, okay? So what I can do is I'll take my handy dandy snips and I'll go and I'll cut that baby off and I'm gonna lay it right there and I'm gonna put two little things over it so I can see it when I come back. I'm gonna put it in a pot. So if anybody wants some uh, Supreme Musk, not Supreme, I can't sell those, but um, Muscadines, leave it in the comment below. I'll get back at you and I'll mail them out there. Phenomenal fee now. All right, let me finish working on this baby. See here guys, these things can really get out of hand, man. Really out of hand. If I had to do this all over again, I wouldn't grow them on the fence, but I don't have the money right now to build a trellis the way I would want it. So the fence is gonna have to do. Like right here, I just pruned all of this. So I'll take this little baby and I'll lay her this way. And I'll dig her up later. Now this one here, let's see where she's going. I'll give her a slight tug. See here guys, honey, if you bring that camera over. Now guys, if you can see here, see how it's growing on the opposite side of the fence? And that's what happens when you, um, when you have these growing on a fence, it can easily, yeah, it grows all, it's like, you see here how I'm pulling this, guys? And she's rooted on the opposite side of the fence. Now what I could do, actually that's what I will do, is I'll go hop the fence and I'll dig it up on the side that it's rooted. I'll snip it right here. That'll actually give me two plants. So the one on the opposite side, I can pot it up and sell it and let this one here just grow on up. And um, remember, when you guys are planting your hole for your muscadines, let's say it comes in a one gallon, I would recommend you guys go out probably about three feet, three feet, use heavily, heavily um, compost, say about 50% compost, um, and the rest can be regular sand. I'm going to show you how my soil looks. And again, irrigation is key with these guys. All right, so here, this is my dirt. This is everything that um, they've been growing in. And so far, so good, guys. All right, guys. This is all the pruning that I left out. And this is just from the grapevines from over there, okay? This took me like a week to do because I did like two, three hours a day. So again, growing your muscadines or your grapes on a fence is a little bit harder also letting them get out of control. It's something that you kind of want to, especially through the spring and the summer months, just stay on top of them, guys. Now over here, I'm going to show you the plants that um, I actually dug up. Now I know some of you guys are looking saying, man, you could have made a lot of cuttings and stuff out of that. And I would have, 
but it was just too much. But next year, that's exactly what my plans are. So over here, guys, I'm gonna show you how many plants I made. Now remember, there's only, I think, 10 along that 100 feet uh, row over there. And these are the plants that I got out of that. All of these babies. Must gonna have some sale, guys. Yeah, like this one here, this is a, um, it just says muscadine grape on that one. But I think most of these over here are going to be noble. This is actually a southern home. Look at the cane on that baby. And um, this is like 35, 40 plants that I actually dug up just in that row from, uh, you know, separating the plants. So. All right, now, guys, what I'm going to do is show you how quick, how, um, how simple it is to actually stick one of these in the pot and make yourselves a few bucks towards the weekend. And, you know, if you have grandkids and stuff like that, it's something easy that, you know, the kids can make them some money, okay? So here I have a pot, and this is half topsoil. And what I'm going to do, Remember where I threw that plant, baby? On the rack. Okay. Now see here, guys. She's already rooted out right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it off right here. No sense for that to be there. Try to make an even cut. All right. See right there. And what I do, I'm going to just scrape it a little bit more, take off a little bit of that cambium layer so she can root in different places, give me a higher success rate. Okay. So here, guys, just take your shears and turn it the other way and just start filing it just like that. Takes a few seconds, guys. Remember, gardening, you can't be lazy. And guys, again, this is something that's good with your nieces, your nephews, your, um, you know, any of your family. You know, teach the kids how to make a few bucks to buy the little Fortnite video games, whatever foolishness those kids play. Then, now what I'm going to do here, I don't have a shovel handy right now, but I'm going to use my gloves. See there, guys? That's some good stuff. I'm gonna start selling dirt soon too. So anybody needs some good compost, mycorrhizal fungi, leave it in the comments below. Okay, now I'm gonna take this baby like that. I'll put a little bit more in there first. Guys, this is a plant, okay? Now this one isn't as big, but again, you know, I wish I had a smaller plant, but right now I'm just trying to show you guys how simple that is. And you figure once it leaves out, you can sell it four or five bucks all day. You know, help another family to grow their own food. Look at that. All right, guys, Supreme Family Garden, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.